Okay, team, here's what's been happening on Ghost Rider. The facts. First, a fire burned out the back room of Mr. Brinker's store at 7 o'clock the same night Jamal delivered a note to Brinker. Then, Brinker accused Jamal. I betcha he's the one who burnt down my store. And the police are on the case. Where were you last night at 7 o'clock? But, so are Jamal's friends. Gabby and Tina are making a video to clear Jamal and a case book to keep track of the suspects and evidence. And Ghost Rider sent a message at Brinker's, copyright infringement. When Alex and Jamal looked it up, they found out that it means it's against the law to sell something that someone else has made unless you get their permission. Now, here are some new facts from the last show. First, Tina and Gabby discover the blank videotape they bought at Brinker's isn't blank. There's a movie on it. What's happening? And the Ghost Rider team gets a new member. All right! And a new clue. Next, the police still think Jamal may have burned down the back room of Brinker's store. Is this your cap? Yeah, it's, it's mine. I left that cap at Mr. Brinker's Friday afternoon, but I don't know how it got into that back room. So the team calls a rally to discuss the case. Maybe Mr. Brinker burned his store himself for insurance or something. He's got an alibi. He was at a school meeting at 7, remember? Then Ghost Rider shows up and things get really tense. Police arrest warrant, Jamal Jenkins. Guys, you've got to find out who did this. Or I'm going to jail. Will Jamal take the heat? Or can the team figure out who really set the fire in time? Could it be the kid with the firecrackers Jamal saw outside Brinker's? Or Mr. Brinker himself? The team thinks he's got an alibi. And what about the man Jamal saw delivering boxes to Brinker's the night of the fire? Get a pencil in your casebook out and keep track of the clues, because the Ghost Rider team is on the case. Arrest. Ordered and authorized. 912. Guys, we've got to find out who did this. Or I'm going to jail. Why would Mr. Brinker have a tape with a movie on it, but no label? And what does it have to do with the fire? It's got to mean something. Look! Is that the firecracker kid? Yeah, come on. Hey, wait up! Ah. Why else would he run away? Come on, we gotta get Craig. He'll have some ideas. Okay. That's the truck. Jamal saw the guy making a delivery to Mr. Brinker's right before the fire started. Why was he making a delivery after the store was closed? And why is he working on Sunday? Let's go ask him. Sure, Brinker's a customer. Hey, yo, shoot from over there. You want my best side, don't you? No, we want to know what Mr. Brinker buys. This, these, he buys videotapes, thousands of them. Here, take some flyers. When was the last time you made a delivery? Friday night, just before his place burned. Why did you make a delivery at night? I always do, I got my own key and everything. Strange. He doesn't want me disturbing the customers. But I'll tell you ladies something that is strange. The guy owes me some serious bread. Like how much? How much? A lot. I hope you see this breaking you deadbeat because you are cut off. You don't pay me, you might find the rest of your store getting a little damaged if you know what I mean. That video game was just like the one Mr. Brinker sold me. But the one he sold you wasn't blank. It had a movie on it. What does that mean? I don't know. I think we have our culprit. Tony was at the scene of the crime when the fire started. And Brinker owes him a lot of money. I'll bet he set the fire because Brinker wouldn't pay up. I think we just finished our video. 
we think something illegal is going down in Brinkers. Has to do with uh, videotapes. That was supposed to be blank, but there's a movie on it. Hey, uh, you're the electronics expert. What do you think? I don't know. Hey, can you get me a look at Brinker's back room? Uh, that's risky. Is it important? It might be. Okay, I got an idea. You, I never heard of any Gregory Gargantua. I, I can't talk now, anyway. <laughs> Here you go, number 243. That'll be 250 a night. Enjoy. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, Mr. Brink, I'm so sorry. Well, how did that happen? I don't know. Don't tell my dad. I'll pay for it. Oh, don't I'm hang on I'm that. Sorry. Well, give me a hand here. Come on, help me. All right. I just like can't. Well, don't cry about it. Just help me. Okay. Help me. Pick it up. Man, it smells back here. Greg, what are we looking for anyway? I'll know it when I see it. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Brink. I like to rent all these movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Two and two. Uh, 171. <laughs> Herbs? Yeah. How could you tell? Well, the VCRs, the way they were set up, uh -huh. he could make a bunch of copies from just one movie. Is that wrong or something? Well, if you take big time movies and you copy them and then you sell a lot of them, yeah, it is. But we got no proof of that. We only got that one cheap Tina bot. So what's that got to do with the fire? I don't know. It doesn't help me much either, that does it? I don't think so. the script. Gotcha, what do you have so far? Who burned Mr. Brinker's store? We know, and the answer may surprise you. Let's start by setting the scene. Cool. Now, we need some words to describe the scene, the night of the crime. Why? To set the mood. We don't have the video from that night, so the words have to show what it was like. OK, OK, it was dark. Dark. Good. It was Friday night, and the store was closed. Yeah. And it was 7 o'clock. It was a full moon. Uh, yeah, but how about it hadn't rained in days? The store could have been dry. 
So it burned faster. But it didn't burn faster. We know it burned slow. Gabby, you forgot what we were trying to do. No, I didn't. We were... What were we trying to do again? We were trying to set the mood. Well, we did enough of that. Dark, Friday night, store closed, and 7 o'clock. Okay, so let's get to the facts. Right, um, where was Mr. Brinker? And when did he close up? How long did the fire burn? And what time did he... article about the fire? I gotta see it again. Brinker Electronics, the morning after. The fire knocked out power to the entire building. Yeah, what's up? Something strange. We gotta rally. We got school. Then we'll do it after school. Come on. Aren't we gonna shoot the opener? No. As if I'm right, a lot of the things we said in the videos gotta change. Exhibit A. I shot this before the fire. Hey, that's the FBI agent. There are two clocks in this shot. Mr. Brinker's and the one next door. Both say 420. Exhibit B. Our interview with McQuaid the morning after the fire, before the power went back on. Look at Brinker's clock. 7.05, right? Check the clock next door. Whoa, that one says 8.05. Mr. Brinker's is an hour earlier. But what does that mean? We think it means that whoever started the fire really did it at 8. Then set Mr. Brinker's clock back an hour so it looked like it started at 7. And that proves Jamal is innocent, because at 8 o'clock, he was home with his grandma. Yeah, oh, right. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Right. At 7 o'clock, Friday night, Mr. Milo Brinker was speaking to the Hurston Elementary School parents group about... Brinker's alibi. He was at the school at 7 when everybody thought the fire started. But if the fire started at 8... Brinker's alibi. It doesn't hold up. He could have set that fire himself. Why would he set his own store on fire? Ghost Rider wrote something strange. Remember, videos are key? When Craig and I checked out Mr. Brinker's back room, Craig found out that Mr. Brinker had a system to copy video cassettes. Copy videos, copy, copyright infringement. It was on the letter from the FBI agent. Wait, FBI, copyright infringement, copying videos. We've all seen it, hundreds of times. Hand me one of those tapes over there, Tina. Every movie you buy around has something like this. Federal law prohibits the duplication of copyrighted videos. That's it, copyright infringement. What does that mean? Suppose I write a song. It's my song and only I can sell it. If somebody else sells it, it's like stealing. So if Mr. Brinker made copies of movies and sold them, it's like stealing from the movie makers. Here's proof. Mr. Brinker sold me one by mistake. I'll bet he burned the store to destroy the evidence. We got him. Yeah, All right. right. Hold it. Hold it. No, we don't. Say what? Mr. Brinker burned all the evidence. All we have is one lousy little tape from Tina. That's not enough.
But Mr. Brinker brought thousands of tapes. There's got to be proof of that. Yeah, but where? Receipts? No way. Mr. Brinker's records burned up in the fire. What receipts? Man, I hope Tony has enough receipts. Ghost Rider must have read them. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Ghost Rider. Uh oh. Double uh-oh. Your grandma said you were coming right home after school. Where you been? Did I? And you lied to me, Jamal. I told Lieutenant McQuaid you would never lie to me. And now I find out they have enough evidence to arrest you for arson. What is going on? Dad, I want to tell you, but first, the police and... Son, I have a warrant for your arrest. <sighs> Lieutenant McQuaid. This is the note you've been looking for. I was the one who dropped that note on Friday night. But don't jump to any conclusions. We have assembled all the facts, and we know who really set that fire. Excuse me, Mr. Brinker. When I bought this videotape, you said it was new, but there's a movie on it. So? Somebody made a mistake. Or somebody made a copy of a movie. Do you do that here, Mr. Brinker? What? Hey, hey, where do you think you're going? Hey, you guys get out of here, or I'm calling the police. Got a receipt from Tony Central Park Video. It says that you bought 200 blind videotapes. What do you do with all those tapes, Mr. Brinker? Make copies of more movies, huh? 200 blind tapes? So what? I copy home movies for people. You gotta do better than that. Oh, we will. Mr. Brinker, we have proof that you've bought over 5,000 blank video cassettes. That's a lot of home movies. Oh, we need to see those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are those 5,000 blank tapes? Yeah, I remember those. Going somewhere, Mr. Brinker? I got him, McQuaid. I got him. Arrest him. Sorry. Jamal's not a suspect anymore. But he was here when the fire started. Yes, he was here at 659. We have proof of that now. This is the note he dropped off. Well, then he was the guy in the surveillance video. Arrest him. Just a minute. Jamal, could you read the note, please? Dear Mr. Brinker, the way you treat some of your best customers is unjust. If you were nicer, we would buy more things from you. We don't want to make trouble. All we want is to be treated fairly. Sincerely, Jamal. Now, does that sound like something a kid would write who's about to burn down your store? No. See, then it gives Jamal off the hook. That doesn't prove anything. Yes, it does. It proves that he was here at 6.59. And we also have a videotape made by Gabby and Tina. It proves the fire didn't start at 7 after all. It started at 8. Thanks to these kids, we found out a lot about you. The FBI said that you're allegedly part of the biggest videotape pirating ring in New York history. Does the name Gargantua mean anything to you? No, Gargantua or Mr. Big, as they call himself, pirated videotapes, which you make right here. The FBI gave you a notice to testify against Mr. Big, and that same night, your store caught fire. Thanks to these kids, we've also found out where you get your blank tapes. Yeah, I bet we all get medals. Alex, uh, could you move that board aside? It's a felony to destroy evidence, Mr. Brinker. You know that. You got no proof I started that fire? 
Except for one thing. How come no one heard the smoke alarm? Was it because you turned off the smoke alarm? No, it, it, it's burnt out. Well, I think it's time we take a look at the circuit breaker box that controls Mr. Brinker's electricity. We know you're the only one who has the key, Mr. Brinker. Well, this is an invasion of my privacy. I have a search warrant. Would you please open up the circuit breaker box, Mr. Brinker? Now, if the switch is on, then yeah, the alarm is burned out. But if it's off, that means he turned it off. Oh, no. It is off. He did do it. Hold it, Brinker. I'm gonna fight this. I'm not gonna go without a fight. I'm sure of that. See that? Yeah, so at all. You're a regular Dick Tracy. Jamal, you and your friends did some really good detective work. Thanks. But I want you to know that what Brinker did, destroying evidence, it's a crime. But withholding evidence is also wrong. Yes, sir. I see that now. I'll be in touch, Mr. Jenkins. Thanks, Lieutenant. Well, this is a tough one. I'm proud of what you and your friends did. But I can't forget you weren't honest with me. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Dad. I think we need to have a family meeting to talk about this. Yes, sir. Of course, we'll have time for that now, since you won't be going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> So in conclusion, it was these clues. The FBI agent, the movie on the videotape, and the thousands of blank cassettes Mr. Brinker bought that made us think he was copying movies. But it wasn't until we discovered the two clocks were different times that we figured out the fire was set at 8 o'clock, not 7 o'clock. Because of that, Mr. Brinker lost his alibi. Turned off smoke alarm was the final piece of evidence. So who burned Mr. Brinker's store? It was Mr. Brinker, and Jamal is innocent. <laughs> that was great, guys. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you guys. And now it's time for some sweet, creamy, lemony, delicious. The cake! The, the cake! cake. The cake. The cake. Oh. My yeah, dad go. made this to celebrate Jamal's being cleared. You guys, I got something to say. First of all, that video was fantastic. And secondly, I gotta thank you guys. If it wasn't for you, I'd be in some deep trouble. Yeah! yeah. yeah. There's still one thing I don't understand. What's that? Well, how did you guys figure out what it said on the FBI letter? You know, like copyright infringement and all? Uh, it's kind of a secret, Craig. Look! What's going on? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 What's it mean? It means that you're on the team and the adventure is just beginning. Your head reads. 
Monsters is brought to you in part by Nike. Additional bucks that keep our team supreme come from public television viewers like you and me. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The John Dean Catherine T. McCarver Foundation. The Pew Charitable Trust. And the U.S. Department of Education. But you can't say it all in breath. I bet you can. Friends are forever. Let's show what we can do. See a friend in trouble. Ghost Rider was originally produced for the Public Broadcasting Service. Read more about Ghost Rider and the Ghost Rider team in these Bantam books. To purchase Bantam books, video cassettes, or a teacher's guide for programs in this series, contact GPN, P.O. Box 80669, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68501, or call one 800 228 4630.